Nearly every air conditioner, refrigerator, heat pump, and even most cars contain greenhouse gases 500 times more powerful than CO2. This is a 12 ounce can of refrigerant that costs $10. If I release this gas into the atmosphere, it would cause more global warming than driving 1,200 miles. Each year, these super pollutants cause more greenhouse gas emissions than the entire aviation sector. On the one hand, the emissions from refrigerants are killing people by causing more extreme heat waves, wildfires, floods, and famines. But on the other hand, these chemicals are key to technologies like refrigerators and air conditioners that save lives. Luckily, we have some solutions, and I I'm optimistic one day we won't have to worry about refrigerants anymore. Let me explain. The refrigerants we use today are man-made beasts of chemicals, strange concoctions cooked up to cool more efficiently than any natural chemical ever could. Refrigerants are generally made with halogens, extremely reactive chemicals like chlorine, bromine, and fluorine. These elements are so reactive that they are rarely found on their own in nature. Usually they are found bonded with metals and minerals. To make refrigerants, we mine these rocks, for example the bright green fluorite, and process them with other chemicals like sulfuric acid. Obviously, this would never happen in nature, so when these gases first got out into the atmosphere, we essentially conducted a science experiment on our planet, introducing this novel gas into the delicate system known as Earth. The results of this accidental experiment were shocking and nearly catastrophic. In the 70s, scientists realized that the refrigerants we were making were tearing up the ozone layer, a key part of the atmosphere that protects life on Earth from harmful UV rays. The chlorine and bromine from refrigerants were reacting with the ozone to create the infamous hole in the ozone layer. As soon as this research got settled, governments leapt into action. In 1987, a treaty to regulate refrigerant production was signed into place unanimously by the UN. Known as the Montreal Protocol, the treaty is one of the few that have ever achieved universal ratification by UN members. Thanks to the new agreement, the most harmful ozone-depleting gases were gradually phased down. Humanity successfully came together to save the ozone layer. But just just because a gas doesn't damage the ozone doesn't mean it's actually harmless. The most popular refrigerants in use today are still a major cause of the climate crisis. We've been doing a great job phasing out the ozone depleting gases, but chemicals can still heat up earth without damaging the ozone. We're gradually phasing some of these out still, but we have a long way to go. It is important that we phase them out gradually. We can't just stop using refrigerants tomorrow. Humanity relies heavily on refrigeration, and it will only become more important as Earth gets hotter. Around the 1930s, people around the world started relying on refrigeration for food. Before refrigeration, families had to spend more time pickling, canning, and drying foods to ensure they had what they needed during the winter when nothing could grow. Researchers have actually estimated that the nutrition benefits of refrigeration are so big they literally made Americans 5% taller since the 1890s. It's not just the nutrition that benefits either. Vaccines and other medical supplies are typically refrigerated to increase their shelf life and ensure that we can ship them far and always have enough on hand. Air conditioners also save lives. Many areas we now live in are dangerously hot in the summer and only becoming hotter as the earth heats up. Access to cooling has already saved tens of thousands of lives and experts estimate that the number could increase dramatically as the earth gets warmer and more people get air conditioners. And while many climate solutions can be seen through the lens of stop, like stop fossil fuel use, stop red meat intake, stop deforestation, in a way we have to speed up air conditioners adoption. 3.5 billion people live in hot climates, and currently only 15% of them have air conditioners. If we want to adapt to a warming planet and save tens or hundreds of thousands of lives, we'll need way more air conditioners. It's only fair that everyone should have access to this life-saving technology. So if it's clear we need air conditioners and refrigerators, how can we ensure that they don't destroy our climate? It helps to understand how cooling units work. The exact science is a bit complicated, but the idea is that refrigerant gets moved around in a very particular way through a series of coils that cool things down inside the refrigerator and warm things up outside the refrigerator, effectively moving heat from inside to outside. Air conditioners work the same way, except on a larger scale, cooling down the entirety of your room or house while heating up the outside portion of the air conditioner. An important thing to understand is that no gas gets used up by this process. In other words, if it's all working properly, no refrigerant leaks into the atmosphere and the refrigerant lasts basically forever. The problem comes in when something breaks or someone decides it's time for a new cooling unit. Most cooling units last over 15 years, but eventually it's time for a new one as maintenance becomes 
too expensive, or you want one that's more energy efficient. In a perfect world, an old fridge would get disposed of very carefully, and the refrigerant would be collected from the fridge and either recycled or destroyed. But of course, there are billions of cooling units around the world, and not everyone knows or cares about how to properly dispose of them. Even in the US, where there are laws that regulate improper disposal of refrigerants, the laws are often ignored or conveniently forgotten about to save time and simplify the process of getting a new unit. When these units are thrown out, that's when the refrigerant usually escapes in the atmosphere, turning the theoretical risk into actual global warming. And the warming here is big. Managing refrigerants intelligently could prevent half a degree of warming by 2100. In fact, if we don't figure out refrigerants, it's hard to imagine how we'd keep warming under 2 degrees Celsius. Clearly, this is an issue, and it's frustrating because on the surface, the issue is so simple. Just dispose of the appliances properly. But it's a bit like littering. It's easy to get away with it, and if everyone else is doing it, then people don't see why they should do things the right way. But what makes wasting refrigerant even sillier is that usually the refrigerant they leak into the atmosphere is actually worth money. Just one pound of refrigerant can be worth up to $200, depending on the type. Since a typical home's AC can have 10 or more pounds of refrigerant and commercial units much more, it's an obvious waste that we just let this gas escape into the atmosphere instead of saving it. This is why many companies are now paying to collect and reclaim refrigerants. If a cooling unit is being decommissioned, there's money to be made by collecting that refrigerant and repackaging and reselling it. If a decommissioned unit's refrigerant is not going to be reclaimed, we still need to capture and destroy it. In this case, there isn't an obvious way to make this worthwhile for the owner of the unit. If I'm a grocery store owner and I need to replace a bunch of old freezers, why should I bother making sure the refrigerants are properly destroyed? It's a tough problem, but there is one solution that's been making some headway. At REN, the company I co-founded, we actually pay people to collect and destroy refrigerants. This means we can incentivize that store owner to dispose of their refrigerants properly. This is done through a mechanism known as carbon credits, where independent third parties verify exactly how much refrigerant is properly being destroyed and let companies or individuals buy those carbon credits to incentivize companies to take care of their waste. It's a cost-effective and robustly measured way to have a real impact on the climate. Since the laws and regulations in place around cooling unit disposal aren't effective enough, carbon credits give us a way to pay for this critical work essentially through crowdfunding. It may not be as pretty as planting a forest, but it can actually be a more cost-effective way to reduce emissions. Although carbon credits in general have faced some criticism for some good reasons, refrigerant credits are among the most trustworthy out there. Of course, while crowdfunding the destruction of refrigerants is a great way to have climate impact today, it's not a long-term solution on its own. The only reason it works is because governments around the world have agreed to make it illegal to produce the worst refrigerants. This means that if we collect and destroy a refrigerant that is now banned, it won't ever be replaced by that same refrigerant. Instead, companies will replace it with a cleaner alternative. As soon as possible, we need to have only harmless, safe refrigerants in all cooling equipment going forward. There are lots of candidates that could work here. Neon, helium, ammonia, propane, and even water all theoretically work as refrigerants, and in some cases, they're used today. However, it seems like every molecule has its own drawbacks. Water, for instance, freezes at a relatively high temperature compared to some of the other options. It's hard to imagine how it could be effective in a freezer, for example, since by definition, you want to cool the freezer below the freezing point of water. That will be inefficient. And of course, a molecule like propane or butane can work great as a refrigerant, but without careful safety measure, there's a risk it could explode or cause a fire. But the most common drawback is simply that some refrigerants are more energy efficient than others. And efficiency is important here, as refrigerants and air conditioners use a lot of energy, which can come at a cost to our climate and also to regular people paying their energy bills. However, with the modern advances we're seeing in technology alongside the dramatic warming caused by these super pollutants, we're rapidly approaching the point where there's no reason to use outdated refrigerants and new appliances. We still have work to do to determine the end game of refrigerants, but it seems entirely possible to fix this currently dirty industry if we keep applying pressure. Now, as one person watching this video, you won't be able to replace all the refrigerants in the world on your own, but there's still a few big things you can do to help with the refrigerants problem. The first is to take care of your own refrigerants. If you have to get rid of a fridge, look online to see what waste disposal programs your area has. Many governments have services that will collect your fridge for free or even pay you for it. When you buy a fridge, the company you're buying from also might have a program to take your old fridge off your hands. When you replace an air conditioner, the licensed HVAC professional you work with should know what to do with the old one, but it never hurts to ask and double check that it's being disposed of properly. And when you buy a new fridge or air conditioner, make sure you buy one that's energy efficient and uses a climate-friendly refrigerant. 
Energy Star has a great website that helps with this, and we'll leave a link in the description with our guide on how to shop for cooling units. We'll also leave some links on how you can get involved politically. The only way to fix this problem for good is to keep applying pressure to our local and national governments. In the meantime, if you want to help destroy refrigerants today, you can sign up for REN. The big idea behind REN is to make it easy for anyone to do something about climate change. And offsetting your own carbon footprint is an easy but impactful way to have an impact today. We're always looking for the best ways we can use funding from our members to have an impact. And recently, we've been diving deep into refrigerants. In April, we went on a tour of our partner Agas's facilities and saw where the refrigerants are actually destroyed. At REN, we love to be as accurate as possible when it comes to impact, and it was really cool to see the impact verification process take place. We saw even the tiniest details like the scale they use to weigh the refrigerants get double-checked by third-party consultants, just so we could be sure we're really having the impact we promise. I'll leave a link in the description specifically to our refrigerant destruction projects, so if you're curious, you can learn more and sign up for REN. Thank you.